lab F, 1F. It's the sixth lab. So you've made it through the first lab, 1A. You learned how to, you know, load data from some preloaded data sets. You learned how to view it. You learned the structure. Uh, lab 2, that's lab 1B. You learned a little bit about, uh, you know, how to look at this data with some plots. Lab C, you learned how to load new data in. Lab D, you learned how to filter data. Lab E, you learned how to do some relational graphs, so some scatter plots. Well, today we're going to talk about cleaning data. So, data can be very messy. Definitely, very messy. And so, that's kind of normal. Uh, so, in this, it says get used to dirty data. So we're going to learn how to clean data. We're going to learn how to turn it into something that's useful for you, that's going to really help you. So I'm going to go into R, and I'm going to load this up. So this is the sixth lab. All right. A diamond in the rough, just like Aladdin. So since lab one, the data we've been using has been clean. So why do we call it clean? Variables, they're named. That's very nice. We know what they mean. There wasn't any typos. Numerical values were considered numbers. Categorical variables were called categories. Unfortunately, this is not what most data like, looks like for various reasons. So we're going to start looking at some messy data. Variables that don't have names that mean anything. Uh, categorical variables that are misspelled. Uh, numerical variables that have uh, that are input wrong. Their example is: imagine you're taking people's height, and there's a 6.86, so the person probably entered the decimal point in the wrong place. Or numerical vari variables that are incorrectly coded. You have been working with the American Time Use Survey, and this American Time Use Survey is some dirty data. Why is it dirty? Because it's submitted by humans. It's not. It's not data scientists or statisticians. Who are, are organizing this data. It's just a bunch of people who are submitting stuff. So we're going to work with that data and try to clean it up. So the first thing we have to do is load it. So load it and view it just like that. There it is. There's our dirty data. So what parts of the data do you think need cleaning? So I'll give you a, I'll point you in the right direction. V1, V2, V3. It's not particularly helpful, right? We don't really know what that means. So we need to come up with some variable names so that when we use this, these variables that we actually know, like, what does this correspond to? So the description of the actual variables is this. So we need to name these variables. So in here, the code that we're going to use, ATU cleaner. So we're cleaning it. So this is just a new name of a new table. Okay, we're calling it cleaner, and then we're using this new function it's called rename. So we're going to rename the names in our old table. So we have ATU dirty, and then we're going to name them. So we want to call the first variable age. And I'll go. I'll just show you here the age, and then uh, gender variable two. Whether a person is employed full time or part time. We'll just call this employee. Whether a person has physical disabilities or a physical difficulty, we'll just call this disability. How long a person sleeps, we'll just call that sleeps. I'm actually going to put sleeps min. Just tells me a little bit about it. How long the survey taker spent on homework, so homework, and how long the respondent spent socializing in minutes, so we'll call that social min. So if I run this, it's going to rename, it's going to create a new table, it's going to take and rename those variables that were a little long. Now you might notice that this code is kind of spilling all the way over here. So one one strategy you can use is I'm going to hit over here. I'm going to go enter. And uh, RStudio is nice and it, it does the proper formatting. 
So this holes code is going to run, and I have a new database now. I have a new table. And I can see it over here. It's got names. Okay. Cool. It's a little cleaner now. So next, we're going to talk about string. So in programming, a string is, uh, is like a word. It's text, and it's made up of characters. So there's 0 through 9. That's, that's a possible character. And then A through Z. And then there's other uh, non-alphanumeric characters like uh, at signs and all that. So these are some examples. The following, notice that each string has quotes. So we use quotes to identify something as a string. Now in some cases, R is going to treat the values that look like numbers as if they were strings. Sometimes this is good. For example, we can code a yes or no as a quote one or a quote two. Sometimes we don't want that. Um, and the number of siblings. So if we look at this data, uh, we have this as a character, how long they slept in minutes. Uh, and if we look at the structure, so remember that's the str code. So I was showing you the structure right here in the environment, but uh, it's a lot easier if it's in the console. So we're going to look at this. So I'm going to write down the variables that should be numeric, but are improperly coded. So you're going to go through here, and you're going to say, okay, is case ID, is that supposed to be numeric? Um, I think it's fine as a, as a factor. Age, should age be a, a character, or should it be a number? Uh, should gender be a number? Should employed be a number? No, right, because it's either full-time or part-time. So that's, that's good. Disability, should disability be a number? No, it's either they're disabled or they're not. Should sleep time in minutes be a character? No, it should be, that should be, should be a number, right? How long? And then homework, that should be a number. And social time in minutes should also be a number. So now we're going to change these strings into numbers. So to fix this, we need to tell R to think of our numeric variables as numeric variables. And that's what this as.numeric does. So for example, as.numeric 3.14 will be a number 3.14. So we are going to use something called mutate. I'm telling my I want to continue to use the same very the same table name. And then I want to use mutate. You can think of mutate as uh, somebody would be mutated if they had multiple arms or limbs, or if their arms or limbs look different than normal, they are mutated. So we're going to mutate our database. And in this case, it's going to be good. It's like an X-Men. So it's like we're creating a mutant. A good mutant, though, that will be helpful. Maybe that has laser beams or um, an adamantium skeleton. God, I'm a nerd. ATU, this is, notice I'm using the same table. I'm saying take that same table, keep the same name, and then I want to change the age to a number. And then I'm going to just go through all of the variables and do the same thing. Sleeps in minute, I want that to be a numeric. Okay. Uh, homework. So it's already starting to get unwieldy, so I'm going to hit enter here. Homework, I also want that to be numeric. And last one, social time, minutes. All right, looks good. So once this code works, I've just added everything. All right, so let's look at our structure again. There you go, look, it's a number. Okay. Cool. Seems pretty good. So now we want to figure out about the categorical variables. So anything that is uh, a category. So gender uses one and two for male and female. And it's often a lot easier to analyze and interpret when we use more 
descriptive categories. Instead of one and two, we actually use male and female. So we want to we want to first we're going to use this this function. This is actually a really useful function. It's called tally. You'll use this you'll use this again for sure. So we're going to analyze the variable gender. So it tells us the number of, I, of data items that are one and two. Again, it, it would be much easier if it was male and female. So that's why we're going to use mutate again. So we're making another another mutant. So gender. So the ver the function that we're using here is called recode. So it's, we're going to say, please, I would like zero one to be male, and I would like 0, 2 to be female. I'm putting quotes after the strings, like that. So then they say, let's break this down into its pieces. We are going to replace the current version of ATU Cleaner with a new version, a mutated one. We're going to take the variable gender and we're going to do something called recode. So recoding and reassign. So instead of the factor being one and two, the categories being one and two, the categories are going to be one for male, two for female. So I'm going to run this. So now let's look at that structure again. Right, so now when we look at gender, it says a factor of two levels, male and female. It's a lot easier to read. So if I run tally again, It tells me ah, it's 4,670 males and 5,823 female. It's a lot easier to read. It's a lot more intuitive. That's why we're doing that. The next thing it asks us to do is go ahead and recode based on this, ca this uh, categorical variable about whether a person has a physical challenge. You're going to take this variable right here that I call disability and you're going to change one to be that they're not disabled and two that they are. So do that on your own using this structure. So instead of gender we're going to use disability. And instead of male it'll be disabled. It'll be not disabled. So you could put no. Instead of Two, it'll be they are disabled. They are they are experiencing physical challenge. So that would be yes. And then it asks you to write a script that loads the data set, cleans the data, saves a copy. That's basically what we've already done. So we've been writing a script the whole time. And then once you are done, once you've done all of the code, so you've just you did another cleaning, another mutating to add that next categorical variable. We're going to do this, and that's going to save this now in the data as that. And then we're going to save this new database as a file. So it's an R database file. So we're saving that. It's going to put it in our files. And then we're going to export the script file, which will save as uh, ATU Cleaner or Lab1F. Okay, so this is lab1f, and then you'll save this file, and you'll go into files, and you're going to find those two files, this, our database file, and this. And you're going to go to export, export those. You can export it as a zip file, that's fine. And then you're going to upload that specific file onto Schoology. So that's it. That's the whole lab 1F. You probably should have finished by now the uh, part about adding in that mutate so you're, that you're categorizing, you're categorizing, you're recoding those two things. Uh, make sure that you do everything that you need to, send it to me, and then you're ready to move on to the next lab.